Okay, welcome everybody and thank you for joining us today. We appreciate each and every one of you taking your time out to be with us today. And also would like to welcome our guest panelist Guy Griffiths and thank you for also taking the time out to spend with us today. Just so that you know, each of are working hard to ensure that we are supporting you at, at this time with as much content and knowledge to help you while we're in this crisis position. Please keep an eye out on our social media channels to help to keep up to date with our sessions and we will have a few planned over the next few coming weeks. Just a little bit of housekeeping from me. This session will be recorded so that we can use it again and we will schedule our content. So if there's anybody that you'd like to share this with, uh, please ask them to keep an eye on our social channels uh, for the scheduling. Guy has advised me that his slides will be roughly 25 minutes and then we will open up to questions. And questions can be sent through to myself using the chat function that you can see on the right hand side of your screens. Other than that, we'll get through as many questions as we can, uh, but I will now pass you over to Guy. Thanks very much, Tanya, um, and thanks for the opportunity to talk to everyone at this uh, tough time. Uh, as Tanya says, I'm Guy Griffiths. My company is GG Fit. Uh, in uh, normal times, we help clubs to get their members to stick around longer. We work with eGym for uh, four or five years now. Uh, we do a lot of analysis um, on behalf of eGym, looking at clubs, member journeys and things like that, as I say, normally. Um, and I've, I've, I've presented at lots of eGym events and, and met lots of eGym customers. So um, it's good to be doing this with them. Uh, but we are in very trying times, um, of course, and uh, the fitness industry has taken a, a massive hit um, over this coronavirus um, pandemic. Uh, however, health and fitness are absolutely trending keywords at the moment. Um, and when we get through this, which we will, um, people will be looking for more health and fitness. Um, so hopefully some of the things I'll take you through today will help you to get through this and we will come out the other side fighting. So I really believe as a fitness industry, we've got this. Um, it is going to be tough. It is going to be hard for everyone, for lots of industries. Um, but if we keep a positive mindset and we um, are kind and we talk to each other and to our members, um, then we will all get through this together. Um, those those three keywords, positive mindset, be kind, um, and let's talk are words I'm using um, downstairs at my home school with my kids at the moment quite a lot as well. Um, but they do apply equally to the industry. So I'm going to cover three key areas this afternoon. I'm going to talk about members um, and engaging with them. I'm going to talk about keeping your staff engaged as well. Um, and then I'm going to talk about cancellations because um, they are going to happen. I'm going to talk about what we can do about them. Before I get into the, the detail of, of the presentation and talk about these three areas, I've got a quick quiz for you. I always like to start my presentations with a quiz. This is not going to be a long one. Um, it's just a, uh, a quick, what do these three people have in common? Uh, for those of you who are unsure, top left, we have Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister of the UK at the moment. Top right is Joe Wicks, the body coach. And at the bottom there is Paul Bedford, my friend and uh, fellow retention consultant. So just to check that the chat and the Q&A is working and that everyone can hear me OK. Um, if you want to put your suggestions for what these three gents have in common, um, let's see if we can uh, if we can complete this quiz. There's no prizes for this one, but hopefully there's some comments coming through, Tanya. Is there anything there? We've got some comments coming through. So everyone's kind of suggesting that they're all involved in keeping the nation active at the moment. Exactly right. Yes, well done, everyone. Um, there's no trick questions in, in this quick quiz. It's just, we're just really making sure everyone's online and engaged and working. Um, the answer is yes. Everyone here is about that. They're all fitness champions or activity champions, believe it or not. Boris says we must go out and take one form of exercise a day, such as a run, walk or cycle. Um, and I'll just add to that with, if you don't, I mean, the, the, the actual quote is, you may go outdoors once a day, but I think it's important for our mental health as well as our physical health that we do go outside once a day, no more, for a run, walk or cycle. Uh, Joe Wicks is, um, smashing it out of the park and giving lots of shout outs. As he says every morning, he's the nation's PE teacher. Um, it was almost, it's, a, it's been almost a million live streams every day this week. Um, 
it's went down a little bit today to 800,000 people watching it live. I was doing it with my kids, it's brilliant. Um, and then there's, there's a couple more million people watching it throughout the day. 30 minute hit sessions for kids, super simple exercises, nothing too complicated, lots of fun, lots of funny hops. And um, I can't think of what other exercises are on there, but I was doing them all and it was great. Finally, uh, Paul Bedford's advice earlier this week was make sure you walk your dog every day, even if you don't have a dog. Um, and in our neighborhood watch, we are offering to walk people's dogs, um, whether they are real or imaginary. So, as I say, just a quick quiz to get, get things started. I'm going to go through these three areas now. I'm going to talk a bit about digital. Um, I am going to mention the, the EGM digital app for me as NetPulse, but I'm, I'm also just going to talk simple solutions as well. This is, of course, not a sales pitch. This is advice and um, stuff that you can do in your clubs. So, um, in terms of engaging with members, um, it's critical now more than ever to listen to your members and to ask them what they want or need at this difficult time. Um, you've probably all sent an email out to your members. Uh, that's, it's the you know, easiest and simplest first form of communication that, that most businesses use. Um, however, email open rates have gone through the floor. There's a lot of um, spam, there's a lot of sales emails. Um, I'll mention First Direct, but won't go into it. Um, but, um, sorry, Sports Direct, not First Direct. Um, sending an email is fine, but the open rates are gonna be low. Um, and you do need to use other forms of communication as well as email or as a backup. Um, also, email is typically quite one way. Um, it's probably just here's some information about what's happening with the club. It's not asking for feedback. If you put questions in there, that's great. You'll get a few responses, but you won't get a lot of responses from a lot of your members. A survey is, is then a, a step up and it's asking them what they think and might ask what they want as well. A survey with some open comments fields in there will get um, some more useful feedback, but don't just send the survey by email. It's a good first shot, um, and you can send it again to people who didn't open, maybe, but then you should look at other forms of uh, communication as well, maybe a text um, or um, some other kind of social message. Social feeds are great in this situation because people will be on the social networks. Again, there's a lot of clutter on there but you can get some more genuine feedback and some comments and some interaction with your members about what they want or need. The key for me at the moment, obviously it depends on numbers and it depends on your resource, but we'll come back onto that, is to talk to as many of your members as possible. Reach out to them, find how they're doing, just show them that you care. Um, and while you're at it, find out what they need from you at the moment. Uh, we'll get onto payments later on in terms of cancellations and things like that. So three detailed areas here, talking about um, getting uh, servicing members online, um, setting up challenges, um, and just talking in general about members' motivation. So let me jump into each of these. Um, do pop questions up um, as we go through if you wish. In terms of digital fit fitness, um, it's important to ask what your members want, either on that survey or when you're talking to them on the phone. Uh, Having a, there's lots of online classes going out there. Les Mills are doing a great job with some of their online content and a lot of clubs are using that and I think it's fantastic. Um, but some people won't want a, a, a full on Les Mills class um, and, and they won't have necessarily the, the kit or even the space or, or want to do it in their living room. So sometimes more basic workouts and programs uh, will, be, will be what your members want or need. And they could be delivered through um, an app or through a, a login. And of course, the EGM Digital, aka NetPulse app, is, is brilliant for that. It's one of my favorites. Um, but some people will want something more basic. Um, some people will not be digital at all. And if you can write um, some of your members a program out on a sh or type it up on a Word document and actually print it out to them, print it out for them and, and send it in the post if, if that's allowed, then that will be what some of your members want and need. Um, you could send those by email and if they're looking out for them, then they, they will presumably see those. Hopefully it won't go into their spam folder. But the point is you need to adapt and you need to give your members what they want and need. Digital is fantastic and you can service a lot of your probably quite engaged members 
through apps and through digital channels, but there will be some less engaged members who are the ones you probably need to focus on a bit more now. Um, it's not just about exercise as well. You know, nutrition advice um, is really important at the moment. Jamie Oliver has uh, unsurprisingly started up a, a new program of, uh, you know, how to cope and cook with basic ingredients. Um, and also there's something about a sense of belonging. They're a member of your club or have been a member of your club. They'll be missing their friends. They'll be missing the banter. They'll be um, missing the chance to come to the club and de-stress. So maybe a few exercises or activities are going to do that, but maybe they just want to chat. So the socials are good. A call really is, is best if you have the resource and uh, time to call a lot of your members, then that's brilliant. But look at alternate channels as well. Maybe once you've had that first call, some members just want a text every week, check in on them and see how they're doing. Have they done, you know, how many workouts have they done? They could reply with the number three and you could put that into a challenge, which I'll get onto in a moment. So use all the channels that are available to you. Don't think just digital. You can service the majority of your members through digital. Um, and you can even bring more members in through this phase or more prospects or leads for when we come out of, of the, the, the crisis. So digital fitness is good, um, but keep it simple as well. Um, in terms of challenges and this whole sense of belonging, challenges are really important, whether, they're, whether they are um, digital or whether they're simple, um, basic challenges. Simple, inclusive and varied is my mantra for, for all fitness challenges. Many of them are too complicated normally, um, but having distance run and calories burn and classes completed are the, are the typical challenges that we have. We can still run those and we can still give people a, a virtual cup, um, just a quick photo of them that maybe they've submitted, overlaid with a, you know, a picture of a trophy um, on your Facebook page shows and, and will engage um, with lots of members still. Of course, you can run challenges through apps and that's fantastic because it tracks all the calories burned or maps um, collected or um, distance run, whatever else. But simpler challenges at this time are going to be um, just as important. Have you done three 30 minute sessions this week? Uh, yes, I've done three Joe Wick sessions already. Um, so I could log that I've done that and you could send me a protein bar, for example or if I've uploaded a certain number of exercise selfies this week, send me a coffee voucher for when the club reopens. So lots of different ideas, try and think out of the box with these kind of things. Um, if, if people want to self-report, then that's fine. We're not worried about people cheating here. We're just trying to keep members engaged and post some nice photos on your socials. Um, and yeah, if you want to go for a run with your MyZone belt on and your Fitbit, logging it on Strava, which is what I do, that's great. But simple and, and lowest common denominator stuff is, is what we should be thinking here to try and keep our less engaged members engaged and to keep them active and keep them moving through this time. So just a little bit on challenges there. Um, finally, motivation. Um, I think it's really important, particularly for, again, for some of the typically less engaged members but even some of the members who come to the gym every day, let's check in on them. It's good to talk, as um, I think Bob Hoskins said in a BT advert a couple of years ago now. Um, but while you're talking to members, if they're, if they're all, all OK, who else are they in touch with? Who are they missing? Um, let's see if we can get members not together, because that's not allowed, but talking to each other or even to set up a WhatsApp group for people who are going out for a run. Um, some of the people that I've seen out running for the last few days are not normally runners. Um, some of them are older and are struggling along, but some of them look as if they haven't done cardio for a while, but do normally do weights. So, you know, let's get those people into a, not necessarily a challenge, but into a group so that they can um, still be exercising together, but at least two metres apart. Um, you'll also get, by talking to members, um, ideas and feedback from them um, about what else you could be doing and should be doing. You, know, you don't have to come up with all these ideas yourself um, and you will get a lot of feedback um, from members, uh, usually very positive, but if there is anything negative that you could change, 
then maybe you're going to build a slightly different member journey. Certainly it's different at the moment, but maybe you'll have a different journey when, again, when we come out the other side. So the main thing with members is talk to as many as you can um, and try and not necessarily talk to the regular ones, but, but talk to maybe some of the slightly less engaged members, check that they're okay, reach out to them, support them, either with activities or nutrition advice or mental health um, awareness and, and, and advice, things like that. People are going to need motivation and they are going to need support. And we um, are well placed to deliver this to them in the fitness industry. So a little bit about members there. I hope that's useful. We'll keep, we're keeping an eye still for questions. You can save them till the end if you wish. Um, but uh, I don't think there's anything at the moment, Tanya. Uh, no, not at the moment. Fine, okay, uh, so I'm going to jump into staff, um, not not as big a section, but still, I mean, I would say just as important. And if you still got all your members after all this, but all your staff are off doing something else, then you're going to be in trouble. So you need to know how your staff are coping. And also you need to know what they want or need um, as, as we all go through this together. So are they looking for a sense of purpose? I've just got some examples here, but um, you know, don't assume they do want a sense of purpose, ask them what they want, maybe give them some examples if you need to lead them along. But if they are looking for something to do, and I imagine quite a few of them are, um, is online classes for them or would they shy away from that? In which case, maybe they want to set up some workouts. Again, that could be on the app, um, set up some programs. It could be on the app or like I said earlier, it could be I'm just writing a basic, you know, 10 minute, 15 minute, 30 minute, program for people who are doing this or are stressed about that or have a family. So lots of ideas, lots of things they could be coming up with that will help them A, fill their time, B, get a sense of purpose. Um, and if they want to manage challenges, that will start, it'll help them with the um, member interaction that most of them are normally quite into, not all of them. Um, if they are into member interaction and they're really missing that, maybe they want to help you with the member retention communications. And I don't just mean sending out emails. I mean, calling up members. Um, maybe there's a bit of a script needed for that. Um, I'm not a big fan of, kind of the robot script, but there will be certain points they need to check in with for each member. Um, and ideally to log so that A, you can see the calls are being made and B, you know what members are thinking. Um, I would always say when you are talking to members on the phone, it's always good to follow up, um, particularly if there's a freeze or a suspension, something like that, there needs to be a follow up um, email or, or text or, or some other kind of communication to say, uh, you know, we just had that conversation, this is what's happening. So following up those communications, or even if it's just, I'll give you a call again in a week's time. Um, and this is a great time for personal development. Lots of people are jumping on um, different courses. Uh, I suggest some mental health awareness training. Um, MIND is one, uh, M-I-N-D. If you Google MIND, they've got a bunch of, um, they are free for small businesses. So um, have a look at the MIND website. Um, E-Learn for Business is someone that we work with. We have a retention, an introduction to retention course on there. Um, if you do want to have a look at that, drop me a line. I'm not selling it. I'm just saying that it's there. But eLearn for Business have a bunch of other courses as well. And I'm sure, um, yeah, we could sort you out with some of those if, if you want some personal development um, during this crisis. So talk to your staff, as well as talking to your members, talk to your staff, keep talking to them. Don't just talk to them once and expect them to be getting on with it. Find out how they're feeling about talking to all those members. Um, give them some support as well um, and, and help them through this. And they will help you through this. Um, whether you're a, a small independent club with you know a handful of staff and some casuals um, or a big ledger trust, um, your staff are, are all there still at the moment, hopefully, and probably all looking for something to do. Maybe not full time, but uh, they, they will want to help you. So the final part, talking about cancellations and how can we minimise cancellations during this, um, during this tricky time. So we know what our members want, hopefully now, we've spoken to enough of them. Um, you know what you need to do as a business, um, whether you need to keep taking payments, 
uh, to cover whatever bills you've got or, or whether you can um, pause or whatever else. The most important thing is communication here. So knowing what your members want, knowing what you need to do, hopefully you can find an alignment between those two and then we're going to communicate what it is. At each end of the scale, we've got, well, members keep paying um, and at the other end is members suspend. And generally speaking, uh, we're seeing that leisure trusts, um, you know, the, the big organisations, um, leisure trusts and, and, and big chain gyms are suspending payments. Most smaller independents are keeping their members paying at the moment because that's what their members want to do. They want to support them. There is a middle ground, which I'm calling freeze. And I know there's probably some naming issues. People will call different names, different names. But for me, freeze is I'm effectively pausing the membership, but you're still paying something. That's kind of a middle ground, which I'll go through in a minute. Ultimately, you need to decide on one of these. There's a lot of debates um, on various different groups and forums that I'm in about what's right and what's wrong. I don't think anything's wrong. It's just you need to pick a default for your business. Um, and then I think the right thing to do is to give your members a choice. Um, so if your default is we are suspending our memberships, but you have a choice to still make a payment, then that's great. That's um, that's what Active Nation have done, for example, um, with, it paused everyone, but obviously they're a reg registered charity. So people are saying, well, we want to still keep giving you some money. So they're taking that money as donations um, and gift aid and all that, all that good stuff. So that's the way, that's the way they're processing it. So pick a default, give them a choice, whichever you choose and whichever members choose initially, there are going to be cancellations. This is, this is just the way it's going to be. So whatever happens, members are going to cancel and we do need to, um, to process that and to try and, um, minimize it. But let me just run through those three options in terms of keep paying. Um, if members want to keep paying, and as I say, that the smaller, smaller gyms, the independents and small chains, um, a lot of members are saying we want to keep paying. So if that's what they're saying, then give them what they want, assuming you can, um, whether that is, uh, programs and goal setting advice still, whether it's running challenges, whether it's putting workouts online. Um, or what, whatever the rest of these icons mean. I often put icons up like this that could mean anything to you and could give you ideas. But I think that the, the ideas here are you know, sending in weigh-ins or um, some kind of mental health advice uh, programs, again, or you know, online PT sessions, access to the app, um, other groups. Basically, whatever the members want, if they want to keep paying then give them as much service as you can i would say i've seen clubs even loaning out kettlebells um and you know sending protein bars and resistance bands to their members so that they can carry on working at home which i think is admirable the middle ground of, of freeze um is important i think and by freeze as i said earlier what i mean is they're still paying something so it could be 5% of their normal membership fees. It could be 50% of their normal membership fees. Again, you need to pick a, a level that sits right with your business. Um, and you then give your members who are on this freeze membership, but paying something access to your app, maybe, um, so that they can self serve um, themselves for fitness. So a bit, a bit like a budget gym, really. Um, but they also get to still belong to the club and maybe join challenges and and um, and things like that. The reason a freeze is good from a business point of view is because obviously you still have some kind of income each month, but it's also good to keep a track on how many live members you've still got. Um, so you can look at the payments and if some payments fail or if members have canceled their DD, you will know um, as soon as they do that, if you're with a, a full service provider but if you're with like a gateway provider um, you won't know if you're not taking a monthly payment that they've cancelled so it gives you a better track on cancellations by freezing memberships and still taking a, a nominal or, or maybe even a, a, a bigger payment so freezing memberships is good 
it allows you to track a little bit more. Suspension, um, when you say, right, we're not taking any DDs, or possibly your DD provider says, we're not taking DDs from, for you, in which case, you can, they are providing you a service. This is another one of the debates that's been raging online. Um, if your DD provider has said, we're not taking payments because we're, pa we're pausing everyone, you, and you don't want that, you just need to tell them. Um, and, and they will resume them. But if you suspend memberships, it's then a choice as to whether people still have access to your app. Hopefully you would still do that. Um, Active Nation have done that, for example, and they've got a lot of really good content on there, a lot of examples. Um, I think there's Lesman's workouts, but there's also some really good basic workouts for over 65s and you know 10 minute stretch routines and getting started sessions which i think are, are are important at this time you know we don't just want to be churning out um high intensity uh, classes all the time we need to support as many people as we can so some members will, will want to pay still that's that's fine that's great or they might donate um but while you're suspended um other members will cancel their direct debit. So it's important to try and keep a track of those numbers. Um, as I said, if you're, with, if you're with a full service provider, with a DFC or a Harlands, you can see um, people who cancel their instruction at the bank. You can either on your portal or through a report get um, notifications of people that are canceling their instructions, even though you're not taking any payment. So do have a look at that and monitor those reports um, either daily or weekly. Um, as I say, it's easier with full service providers. If you're with a gateway provider, it's harder. Um, if you're not taking payments, you don't know when you start again, how many of those are going to come back. Uh, but while you're monitoring those, if someone does cancel, of course, the thing to do is it's that phone icon again, talk to those members. So uh, talk to them to find out how they're doing, um, show that you care for them. Ask them if there's anything else you can do for them, even though they've cancelled their instruction. You know, do they want to carry on using the app? Do they want to still be part of the community? Um, because by talking to them about that, um, they might change their mind. Did they know that there was an option to freeze? Um, did they know that um, you need the business support at the moment? Just having those kind of conversations might save a few cancellations. It probably won't save many. Um, because people are going to be on financial hard times um, through and coming out the other side of, of this epidemic, the pandemic. Um, so three options there, keep paying, freeze or suspend. Either way, whatever you choose, members are going to cancel, as I said earlier. So uh, wipe your sales spreadsheet or whiteboard or whatever it is clean. You're probably not looking at the whiteboard if you're not in your club. Um, and set some targets for cancellations or, or turning around cancellation. Because this is the new target. There's no sales targets anymore. We are looking now at um, saving cancellations. And the only way you're going to do that, you can try and email and text them. But your best bet is to talk to as many members as possible. So timing is critical. Look at those reports or whatever information you have on members who are choosing freeze or going just to the default of suspend and then canceling their DD, monitor those reports and communicate in whatever ways you can. You will struggle to get through to some members on the phone, so follow up with a text or an email. Um, but the more you communicate with, the more you will possibly save. Um, and if nothing else, get back once this is all over. Just by ringing and having the conversation and showing a bit of empathy, and chat to them about what they should be doing, regardless of whether they're paying or not. Um, you know, keeping them active, um, keeping them engaged, even though they've cancelled their DD, means that at some point they will come back to your club rather than to the one that um, is, uh, you know, giving them a better offer when this when this all blows over. So there's my um, kind of. A, but run through in terms of engaging with members, talking to staff, um, and then minimizing cancellations as well. There is going to be a big shift to digital um, as we go through this. We're already seeing that. It's not just Joe Wicks and, and Les Mills. There's a lot of uh, digital and online workouts and uh, classes, and I think it's brilliant. 
and we're being dragged into it to be fair we i think the fitness industry has been a little bit slow in going online um but i would temper that a little bit with we need to appeal to not the lowest common denominator but appeal to the less engaged members as well and just make sure we're doing something for them we can bring some of them online and we can get some of them to download the app um but popping something in the post is also going to work so um as a as a quick summary um and just to show you that uh you know we are joe wicks fans in the griffiths household here there's me and my wife and kids on joe wicks this morning um three basic things uh from the government from boris uh, not from me stay safe stay indoors and stay active um but more than anything uh, as an industry um, and when homeschooling if you have a positive mindset and you are kind um, and you keep talking um, then we will all get through this together and we will come out the other side fighting um, and and as fitness industry champions thank you very much back to you tanya i think let's have a look at the questions yeah definitely thank you guy um that was brilliant so we've had a few questions coming through okay uh, the first one here we've got is from mike and it says how much engagement at this time is too much engagement mm, okay good one um uh, how much engagement is too much engagement sorry i'm repeating the question like 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 it's a big room so everyone can hear it but it's actually the classic thinking time um it depends on what the engagement is um they said that there's clearly a lot of uh there's a lot of waffle out there there's a lot of emails coming through telling you that you need a new pair of trainers because you're going to be more active do you really um so it depends on what the content is if the content is good content um you know if, if you want to put out five classes a day because that's what your members need because you've spoken to them and you need five different classes a day then then do that it's not it's not too much um if you're giving people good tips and good advice um you know a bit of nutrition a bit of uh, you know exercise for you and your family then yeah i i, I don't think it i don't think anything is too much um but use use the different channels don't uh, I, I say that's the main thing don't rely obviously don't rely on email i said that don't also, also don't just rely on facebook um which comes back to the talking to members and if you're talking to them um and you are doing too much engagement they'll tell you I hope that answers that one yeah brilliant. and that probably leads nicely on to a question from mark who says uh, what would be the best platform to reach and engage with the elderly to support them through digital or other communication streams mm, uh best platform digitally for the elderly i don't know i've just got my mum a smartphone and i spend about Twenty minutes, half an hour a day on on tech support, <laughs> um, but uh, it depends. It depends on the elderly person. I think some are really into their smartphones and will have all the apps and be doing their banking um, more, more than a lot of us. Um, but others would prefer a um, a workout on a sheet of paper. I think. Um, they might have the wherewithal to, and I'm not I'm sorry if I'm doing the doubt, but they might have the wherewithal to receive it on an email and print it out. Um, but they might have a printer, in which case, stick one in the post. Uh, I, I, so it's another, it depends answer, I'm afraid. Um, but I don't, I don't think there is a, um, you know, specific platform for the elderly. Um, you will find out by talking to them. That's, yeah, yeah that's, that's the honest answer. Perfect. And Josh wants to know, what's the best way to survey people at the moment? Oh, OK. Um, yeah, another good one. Uh, so, so a bit like challenges, surveys should be simple and quick. You want two or three questions for five absolutely tops, I would say. People, I mean, it depends. Your engaged members will always fill a survey in. Um, you don't always want to hear from them because you'll just get good news all the time, which is fine. Um, but asking, you know, a couple of questions with a nice little slider um, and always having an open format or an open comments question at the end is, is good because you, that's that's where you'll get the gold dust. Either everything's great and everything you're doing is right or people will be typing in caps lock telling you what they think of you. Um, best platform to get it out. Um, 
We use SMS quite a lot to send out member surveys. Uh, email is fine as well. Um, I think the standard would probably be to send you know, an email to as many members as you can, or to all members that you can that have opted in, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then for those who don't open it or click it, you can always do a resend, you can automate that. And you can then take it on, take it either online to Facebook or you could put it out on, um, on Facebook or Twitter or whatever else. Um, and you could text people, you could text the remainder, say. So um, the best platform, probably best to start on email, but it depends on your open rate and your click through rate. Text is also good. Sticking it on social is also fine. Multi-channel, I think, is the answer. I hope that's okay. Yeah, of course. And uh, we've got one last question from Emma, who has said that at the moment there is a lot of help and support out there for adults. But what would you suggest is a support mechanism for children at this time? Yeah, good one. Um, so yes, probably I'm probably going on about Joe Wicks too much. I hadn't I'd heard of him, but I wasn't really. I didn't know. I don't know what he looked like until last week. Um, what I think what he's doing is, is clearly amazing, and all his shout outs that he gives to everyone um, is brilliant. Um, but I think there's a place for the fitness industry, you know, for, for us as well here. And I think there's a lot of people working at home. There's a lot of people with kids and the, the amount of bottled up tension that is there, um, is, is clear to see. So, um, it, it kind of goes along with what I'm saying about, um, and I, I feel like I'm not, I'm knocking those mills. I'm not, they're brilliant. They're a fantastic organization. Um, but we do need to, um, appeal more to the inactive and as in general we need to get more inactive people active rather than persuading active people to be more active um a couple of other projects i'm working on are looking at the elderly populations and are looking at you know kids and schools and universities um if i if i had to focus on one i would be looking at kids um and and uh, you know schools and colleges and universities because those people at some point will be old i'm not saying the elderly I mean, they need looking after as well. Um, but this is something if you've got some instructors that want to put some uh, kids workouts together and want to put that content out there, I think you'll do really, really well. Um, I think this is a great opportunity um, for that kind of thing. Um, or just do what all the schools are doing. My teachers, my kids' teachers every day are just saying, have you done Joe Wicks? And my kids are on the their online blogs and talking to their friends about Joe Wicks. And I think it's brilliant. So, um, if in doubt, point them to Joe Wicks because I don't think I think he's doing a great job. Um, but if you want to put some simple, um, not not just kids workouts, but workouts you can do with the kids. Um, I'm I'm a I'm converted to this. I do also I do taekwondo and rugby and 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 um, all sorts of things with my kids. But I think because I think it's just really a really important thing to do. Um, but if you can get more people doing that, then that would make me proud as well. So there we go. Are there any more? Um, no, that's it for today. So Guy, I want to say a huge thank you for coming on and supporting us with this webinar. Um, and obviously everybody else for spending the time with us today as well. Let me just have a little look. So while you're finding your, while you're finding, while, while, while you're finding your, Bit, Tanya. I, I'm, I'm <laughs> quickly going to say look out for the next one of these on Friday, but Tanya will tell you that in a moment. If anyone wants to connect with me on LinkedIn, that's probably the best place. I'm putting an article on there most days with some of this stuff, but other tips as well. Um, and there's details on there about if, if anyone wants a follow up call to just chat about any of this stuff, um, just hit me up at ggfit. You can find at ggfit is Twitter and LinkedIn and Facebook and everything, or just drop me an email to guy at ggfit.com. Any other questions that you were too shy to ask on a webinar? I'm not sure why. Um, yeah, drop me an email or give me any feedback or ask me any questions. And at the moment, uh, I'm not doing much data analysis. I'm not getting out to see clubs. So if anyone wants a quick, you know, like a 15 minute call, more than happy to do that to talk through any of these bits about how you can implement them in your club. So just give me a shout, guy at ggfit.com. Absolutely. Thanks, Guy. And I think that feedback is really important. Um, let us know what content you like, what content you don't, um, so that we can make sure that we continue to make the stuff that you guys are going to find helpful and that's relevant in this current situation. 
So as Guy mentioned, our next webinar will be this Friday at 2 p.m. And that's gonna be with our implementation manager, Mike, who's gonna spend some time going through eGym's new trainer app and how to effectively use it during this time to communicate with your members. There is a survey at the end of this session. So if you do have any further ideas, um, you can put them down in this note, or please feel free to, as Guy said, contact us through social um, or just drop us an email if you find that a little bit more comfortable. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again on Mike's session on Friday. If you haven't already registered, I will send out the link for you straight after this session. Uh, and that's it from us. So thank you again, Guy. Uh, thank you again, everybody, for joining us. Um, and goodbye.